Grocery stores are not going back to normal this year. That's the headline as grocery stores are finding themselves running out of supplies and it's not looking better. Now, why is this happening and what does this mean for you, no matter where you live in regards to the prices that you're going to pay for things, but also what's even going to be available? In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what's being said, warnings they're giving us. And more importantly, we're going to dig into what is the underlying cause for this so you can understand how how to plan for this, how to prepare for this. Um, this goes way deeper than just the groceries on your shelf. This includes um, services that you can um, receive as well as travels that may be affected and so much more. This information, you need to um, survive what's gonna happen the rest of this year. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money uh, because as I say, almost everything that you have learned is wrong. Now, um, while we typically talk about financial topics, this is the financial topic. Um, this is the inner workings of what creates this financial system and drives prices. Of course, this is what you need to understand as you navigate this and as it, of course, takes your money. Um, so jumping right into it, we can see here's this article from CNN Business. Um, of course, the headline is grocery store shelves are not going back to normal this year. Uh, kind of scary. Uh, let's see what they have to say. So it says right here, if you hoped grocery stores this fall and winter would look like they did in the before times, notice this part in the before times with limitless options stretching out before you get ready for some disappointing news. So, um, Wow. If you hoped in the before times, what is the before times? First of all, um, I guess that is CNN's new phrase, which is before the pandemic, uh, before CV, uh, BC, we could call it that, uh, but they're calling it before times. Um, so if you'd hoped that grocery stores would look like they used to, um, we used to have all kinds of types of options in front of you, um, get ready for disappointing news. That's what they say. Many of the country's biggest food makers are telling grocers that they will have limited quantities of a number of their products. And why? Why is this happening? Well, they give us a reason. It's not the full reason. We'll dig into it. But it says, because of labor, commodity, and transportation constraints, throttling supply chain. So labor, there's problems with labor. We're going to take a look at that. Um, commodity, so getting the actual materials they need, and transportation constraints, throttling supply chain. So it's kind of four issues. Labor, <laughs> the people, the, the, the raw materials we need, the commodities, the transportation constraints, and the supply chains. All right, and I'm gonna, we're going to look at why those are being affected in a second. But it says some suppliers are also telling grocers to cancel their promotions. Hey, just warning you, store, you're not going to get the products that you need. We can see down here, suppliers are warning the company of potential shortages of food. So there's going to be food shortages. Be careful. Um, around 18% of beverages, 15% of frozen food, 16% of snacks, 15% of candy, and 18% of baker items were out of stock at stores during the week ending October 3rd. That's a big number. Almost 20% of beverages, almost 20% of bakery items were out of stock. Um, and they say this is going to be the new norm. Now, this is a CNN article, all right? Um, this isn't some like alt uh, news source. They say this is the new norm, so get ready for it. Some food brands are imposing allocations or purchase caps. Hmm, that sounds somewhat familiar. Um, if you've studied history, every time we've seen a nation take over the food supply um, and uh, kind of go into this more socialist control, you start to see rations. That's it. what this is. Uh, some food brands are imposing allocations, better known as rations uh, or purchasing caps, while other vendors are warning more generally of limited availability. It says the limits could pose particular challenges for independent grocers. Now, this is a big piece pose particular challenges for independent grocers. Now, since the pandemic broke out in the last year and a half, we've seen a continued push to get rid of the small businesses. The small businesses, you can't go to shop there, but you can go to the big ones. You can go to Walmart, et cetera. Um, and this is even more destruction of the small mom and pop local um, grocery stores, the local shops, the local producers. Um, they say that they will, um, unfortunately, the manufacturers may not have enough product to go to the small ones. And so they'll prioritize to send the products to the big one. Again, get rid of the small mom and pops, push us back to the higher, um, to the bigger companies. Um, and if we keep going down, we can see here um, in an email on September 14th, a few weeks ago, <clears throat> that labor shortages continue to drive a limited ability to meet demand. So the labor shortages, 
We're not filling the demand, remember? Labor, the commodities, the, the materials, and the transportation. So this is the labor shortages are driving the limited ability to meet the demand. Well, why don't we have enough people? Every job that we have is full. There's not enough people in the United States to work or around the world to work. We're going to look at that. Um, like many sectors, at times, there are challenges in getting our products to stores for a variety of reasons related to supply and distribution. So we don't have the people to drive it there, um, the, and the, the, we don't have the product to make it. We don't have the people to get it there, the distribution. Packaging issues also continue to be a problem. For some seasonings are in tight supply due to challenges procuring glass bottles. So they can't even get the glass bottles to put the seasoning in, and the seasoning can't get to the manufacturer to season the food. You see how everything is like a domino. It starts backing up. And so um, we can see that. Now let's dig into some of these labor shortages. What is going on to cause that? Well, we can see this uh, article that's been making headlines about Southwest Airlines. They've been canceling thousands of plane flights. Um, they started to say that it was due to weather. Uh, the problem with that narrative is two things. One, <laughs> We have radar these days. We can see what the weather's like. And in Florida, there wasn't any weather there. The second problem is that with that narrative is that um, other airlines weren't affected like Southwest was. And so that is a, an interesting thing. Now, Southwest declined to comment whether people were actually missing work. Uh, but of course, all the news coming out shows that there was a not enough people there to work. And why were there not enough people there to work? Well, it has something to do with um, the forced mandates that are being put into place. We won't dig into that. We won't say those words, but the forced mandates that are being put into place. And a lot of people don't want that to happen. And so they've been told they're going to lose their job if they don't take this mandate by this certain date. And so supposedly, uh, per the labor unions, um, they um, are taking their sick leave before they lose their job, which makes sense. If you were going to get fired um, in a week or two and you have a bunch of sick leave, why wouldn't you take that? It makes sense, right? Um, and so that seems to be the thing we can see here. Um, it says that... Uh, um, to, to comply with President Joe Biden's September mandate for federal employees and contractors, it prompted a lawsuit from Southwest Pilots Union. So the union is filing lawsuits to block it. And now with people facing losing their jobs, then they are missing work. Now it says, when asked about whether Southwest claimed about bad weather caused mass cancellations, um, they balked at the suggestion. That sounds like baloney to me. The weather's fine in all connecting areas. There's no bad weather. And so um, I don't want to dig deep into this story. Um, this by itself Itself isn't the only piece. We need to look at more things that are happening. Now, if you've watched my recent video talking about the energy shortages that are happening all over the world, let's go ahead and link to that right up here. Um, and I talked about energy shortages and I talked about how I had made a video uh, over a year ago explaining how the short energy shortages that happened in California would be coming for the country and the rest of the world. I I used my crystal ball. No, I didn't use my crystal ball. I f basically what I said is that the reason why there's power edges is because of policy. The policy is shutting down energy um, to move to something that's not working right now. And so that's why I knew it. And this is more policy. So not only um, the power outage is being caused by um, policy, but now we're having um, travel restrictions caused by policy. We're having food shortages that are now going to be caused by policy. Let's keep digging in. We can see over here, thousands of hospital workers could be fired um, if we dig down into here, we can see that um, if officials say 16% of the state's hospital workers or some 83,000 people are at risk of termination. So um, just in New York alone, f getting rid of terminating over 80,000 medical professionals. And so what happens when you do that? <laughs> when you get rid of that many people in a time when potentially hospitals are already being, um, you know, used, overtaxed, if you would call it that, um, and then you're going to force 80,000 people out of work, what do you think is going to happen? Um, on top of that, we can see we've stopped elective inpatient surgeries. We stopped some of our outpatient um, patient visits. We stopped ICU medical transfers uh, from other referral rural hospitals. We've asked for more time. So you can see this is putting a massive strain, not just into the people that are losing their jobs or quitting their jobs, but all also the hospital system overall, um, and people that need surgeries. Now, for myself personally, I had surgery, um, orthoscopic surgery about six, seven months ago. 
um, in California, and I went to um, um, about a month ago, I went and had an MRI, and I was going to call my doctor and go over the MRI over the phone, because I'm not in California, I'm in Puerto Rico, and um, at the time, I told them I'm not going to be here, so I'm going to need to go over the phone. They said, okay, no problem. Well, since then, that hospital has put a mandate in place, and now because of that mandate, they won't even go over my MRI with me over the phone. I have to come in to, in person to go over my MRI results, um, but of course, I can't come in because of the mandate. And so we're seeing it start to stockpile problems, backup problems. Uh, we can see healthcare workers are suing the state over these issues. And so again, these are policies. Now, I know we talk about finance here typically, and you don't like it when I dip into the political side, but you can't understand the finance without understanding the political. Um, I want to show you that how this disaster, how it kind of dominoes into effect. So we can see second order effects are rising gas prices, um, but it's not just gas prices. So back in the energy video I talked about last week, I talked about how um, natural gas was up over 800%, all right? But what most people think, okay, so um, I guess lots of people are gonna freeze this winter because they can't heat their home, but natural gas is used for so much more. Remember, the entire world supply chains are linked together. So uh, we can see that the disaster that comes after high natural gas prices. So it's one thing that people may freeze and not be able to heat their home. But now what else is causing that? Well, we can see that uh, people are starting to get a hint how ingrained hydrocarbons are to society as we know it. So natural gas is way more than just an energy medium for producing electricity and heating. So not only do the electricity companies use it to generate electricity, it also heats the home. <clears throat> but we can see here no natural gas equals no nitrogen fertilizer for crops. Hmm, so that seems like a pretty big deal. So if we don't have fertilizer for the crops, then we don't have crops. And if we don't have crops and we don't have food, and if we don't have food, then we don't have enough products on the shelf and enough to eat. You see how things start backing up? That seems like a pretty big problem. If no natural gas equals no CO2 as a byproduct of fertilizer manufacture. Okay, well, what do we need CO2 for? Well, the CO2 is used for packaging processed food. So if we don't have CO2, now we can't package processed food. So we don't have enough food, which means we don't have enough going to the grocery stores. See how this works out. No meat and no poultry production. So now no meat. I guess that works part with their plan, which is that they don't want you to eat meat. Um, so we don't have natural gas. Uh, then we have no nitrogen. We don't have crops. We have no CO2. We can't package processed foods. We can't process meat and poultry. Um, no, fee no fizz and beers and sodas. Um, you probably shouldn't drink either of that anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> and you guessed it way higher food prices in much smaller limited quantities. Um, we can see here Britain warned its food producers on Wednesday to prepare for a 400% rise in carbon dioxide prices um, and to avert a shortage of poultry and meat. So uh, prices are going up by 400%. Of course, if they pay more than 400% more for the carbon dioxide, all that gets pushed through to the consumer. That's the prices that you're going to have to pay when you go buy the products if you can find them on the store shelves. Um, we can see that natural gas price surge has forced some fertilizer plants to shut in, to shut down. So it's not even higher prices. They're just completely shut down. There is no fertilizer, even at a higher price you want to pay, which then again means no fertilizer, no crops, no food on your shelf, and you get the point. Now, how am I predicting this? Do I have a crystal ball? No, it's just the policies that they're putting in place. Now, um, this all goes back to, remember, a couple things. One, labor. Two, uh, the commodities, the, the actual resources. And then three, we're talking about um, the supply chains. And so back to the labor, again, here we saw just this week, we saw the job numbers come out and they were shockingly low. As a matter of fact, we can see this headline here. Wow. <laughs> CNBC hosts can't hide their reaction to how low the job numbers were. How low were they? Well, we can see here the consensus of economists had had been around 500,000. They were expecting 500,000 jobs added. Uh, they said that at a minimum, we had to get at least 200,000 at a minimum. Uh, but CNBC hosts were surprised Friday to learn that the U.S. economy had added only 100,000. 
and ninety four thousand, way below the minimum, or just below the minimum, way below what economists had hoped for. So we don't have the amount of people working, um, despite the lower than expected job numbers. The overall unemployment rate still went down, which is kind of weird. Um, how does that happen? Well, that's people jo dropping out of the workforce, um, and so we can see people are dropping out of the workforce, which is causing this problem. Uh, we can see this this um, article that just came out: a record number of Americans just quit their jobs despite having job, um, plenty of job openings. So after seven consecutive months of massive increases in job openings, so more job openings and more businesses were opening back up where they were trying to hire people, uh, the weakest month saw a 290,000 increase. Uh, the strongest July saw 900, almost 100 million, or I'm sorry, almost 1 million new jobs opened. Um, the total number of job openings remains solid at 10 million, 10 and a half million, the second highest number ever on record. But the problem is we don't have people taking those jobs. We don't have people wanting those jobs. Um, we can see here, um, when looking at the JOLTS report last month, we point out that for the first time ever, there were over 2 million more vacant jobs than unemployed workers. The US labor market remains painfully cracked. Um, and we can see down here, the most interesting highlight of today's JOLTS report, however, was neither the openings nor the hiring activity, but rather the number of quits the people that quit their jobs, which surged by 242,000 to a new all-time high of 4.2 million. So people are literally quitting their jobs or being forced out, as we saw here if, with the airlines, as we saw here with the hospitals. Um, they are being uh, forced to quit or they're quitting in anticipation of these mandates, and it is causing grocery stores, shelves, to not go back to normal this year. Are you starting to see the picture? Shortages of energy, shortages of food. That's what's in plan if we don't change these dangerous policies. Um, or maybe I have it wrong. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. That's okay. But either way, leave me a comment and let me know because I want to hear from you. Also, this next couple of years are going to be tough. You're seeing it right here. If you want to learn how to survive and thrive, how to navigate what's happening in the next couple of years, how to build, grow, protect your wealth, I'm having a live event. I'd love for you to attend. Come hang out with me. There's a link down below with 15 of my friends. We're going to tell you exactly what we think is going to happen over the next couple of years. And most importantly, what you should be doing to build, grow, protect your wealth and your freedom and protect your assets. All right. There's a link down below. I hope to see you at that event. And that's what I got for you today. All right. To your success. I'm out.